Awesome. Well, thanks so much, everybody, for hopping in today. If you're catching the replay, we are interviewing a friend of ours who we met virtually a few years ago. I had the pleasure of meeting him last month. Um, his name is Kyle. And you may hear us refer to him as Park Daddy uh, because he is really big into mobile home park investing. And fun fact, uh, when, it, when we started chatting uh, a few years ago, he noticed that I used to teach at a school out in the middle of nowhere in upstate New York. And it was actually, was it your hometown, Kyle? That was my hometown. I graduated there <laughs> from that high school, Utah. How funny is that? So through the same mentor of Ron Legrand, Kyle's going to share his experience. He's got so much going on, um, family business, lots in common with us, and just so much expertise and knowledge. He's also a mentor with Ron's team over there. So Kyle, if you could just share with all of us um, all of your tips and tricks, <laughs> some of your favorite parts <laughs> of being an investor and you know, really intrigued about the mobile home park because I feel like that has really taken off in the last few years. So how did you even get started in that? Sure. Well, um, so I've been an investor about 20 years. And uh, about five years ago, actually, I got into Planet Ron, Ron the Grand's World. And uh, first off, I grew up in mobile home parks. I probably lived in 12 different ones. Um, so we traveled from many different states. So I grew up in mobile home parks, but that's really not how this happened. In Fort Wayne, Indiana right now, been here 23 years, and we do have a, a large property management company here. That's family run, myself, my son-in-law, my son, my wife, my daughter, and a, a, another team of about 10. I started getting involved in rental properties and uh, just buying on land contract. That's all I knew at the time. And then I had heard of this guy 15 years ago, this guy, Ron LeGrand. Somebody had gone to a boot camp and I couldn't imagine what a boot camp meant. All I could picture was four days of on the phone calling people, which scared me to death. But I'm a guy who loves books and tapes. And uh, so somewhere along the lines, I got some Ron tapes. And so about five years ago, uh, my wife was able to retire. We brought her home and we decided we were going to go see Ron the Grand in Cleveland, Ohio for a one day event. And so we got into Ron's world. Um, it just made sense to us because we were already doing this. He opened up so many doors. And as we progressed, we got, we were mentoring with his mentors. And, uh, you know, we too, we started with Tony Pearl and then we went to Alton Jones. But it's when we, we met the Andrew and Aaron Schlag at an event in Nashville in 2019. Young guys. And my son and my son-in-law were young. So, I, you know, we were, we were going to mentor one more time. But we knew they had a mobile home park in Indiana, where we're all from. And uh, they were doing that with Ron LeGrand. And uh, my son-in-law, uh, we, we, he, he found some, a land project that we were going to partner with Ron LeGrand and our mentor. So we're in, in Indiana, we're going to do this land project. And we were going through it and that fell apart, but suddenly there were these two mobile home parks here. And because Aaron and Andrew were already doing the park, you know, we just started picking their brain. And the long story short, uh, three years ago next week, we bought our first park in Indiana uh, at a ridiculously low price. Uh, with private lenders, which, which what we what we learned. And uh, in that same year, we bought a second park. It, it was so cheap, you know, we, we paid cash for it. And then uh, last year, we, we got our third park in Ohio that we actually got with seller financing. And uh, what we discovered, Jen, is because of everything we already have in place, our infrastructure, our office staff, our maintenance guys, me living there, we just absolutely loved the parks. You know, we became mobile home dealers. Our model was to bring in new homes, set them up, sell them. And, and my son-in-law, Dave, has been able to do that. So we've taken parks 20% occupied. One of them is almost 80%. You know, the other is 50%. The other is 70%. 
And that's our model. And we just absolutely love it. And we love turning parks around, communities. Uh, so that's the whole mobile home thing. And we, we are like the flag bearers in Planet Ron for that. And we're proud of that. And we help so many people. And in Ron's commercial mastermind group, I've got a guy, the Grim Reaper, as you guys know, is Mark mm -hmm. Dick. Now he's also now learning and learning. So he's he's helping me together. We're, we're getting better. But uh, that's the whole mobile home park thing. And you are correct. Right now it is hot. And uh, our model is to buy smaller parks, 30 to 50, low vacancy or some sort of problem that we can fix, uh, get some private money, fix these, bring in new homes. And in the commercial world, it's, it's so much different than the residential stuff we're taught. But as we increase our net income, it, it, it tenfold increases the value of that park. And so we have multiple exit strategies, whether it's just to hold for incredible cash flow, uh, refinance non-recourse and go buy other stuff or, or just sell them in the future. Um, that's, that's the whole mobile home park world. And uh, it's hot right now. We're, and again, we're trying to learn, we're, we're professional students as well. And we're just trying to learn as much as we can to help as many people as we can. Oh, so that's fantastic. So what you're doing there, sorry, I just want to say, so you're finding distressed mobile home parks. Yes. That have some issues going on, knowing that you have a remedy to fix it. So you buy them right, you buy them low, you buy the property, you then stabilize it, what's going on, you fix what's broken by yes. then increasing the value of the park. And then once again, you know, you could keep it. Yeah. If you love it, you could sell it if you want, you can and you know, you've got a lot of different choices, which is fantastic, right? Yeah. And as, as you guys know, because what you guys do is so incredible. And now people reach out to you as we've closed parks daily, almost people are reaching out. They've got parks for sale, this or that. So we plan on expanding that in joint ventures. Um, so the, the, the what I really love about it is we did everything. In, in the mobile home world that that we learned in, from Ron. Ron and the Schleg, the Schleg brothers were amazing, but we, we just bought them the way we learned and, and we're just doing everything the way we learn. And, and it's just, just love it. So you're, you're being an ideal Ron student by not reinventing the wheel, which he claims a lot of us <laughs> guys like to do. <laughs> <laughs> no, because he invented the wheel. <laughs> right. Right. And we, we're trying not to reinvent, just do what works, yeah. right? Just, just listen, do it. do what works. Yes. And that's been key. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. Well, I know Andrew really, he's been amazing as well. You know, you can see that he's definitely doing a lot of different things, helped out a lot of students too. Yes. And it's tremendous, obviously. Um, so when you're evaluating one of these properties, is it a, is it a numbers game as far as the vacancies or is it more of you know, distress like the seller wants to sell because of issues. I know when we buy houses, single family homes, usually you have a seller who wants to sell because there's some type of distress going on. But I can imagine that might look slightly different with being a mobile home park. Yeah, it's it's all, I'm not really too concerned on what it is now. Well, with, uh, with our, uh, our, our uh, formula, we have a formula. Hey, if we increase income by this much, this is what it'll be worth. And we run all these scenarios and that's what we're really looking at. What is the upsell here? If we buy it for a hundred thousand and if we do X in, in five years, it's going to be worth 2 million. Well, that's a good deal. Even if we've got to do a lot of work there. So that's kind of, Joe, we're not too afraid of the condition of the park, but we're getting smarter at that. But do is there an opportunity to increase the income? That's really the big sell. Can we increase it and make it attractive if we do want to get rid of it? So it's almost like a multifamily, right? It's like an apartment complex. You just, you know, you, yeah. you obviously increase the value, bring rents up, right? And then it's obviously worth substantially more. Yeah, exactly. And what I didn't mention, our model 
is to not own any of these homes. Uh, the first two parks we bought were all tenant owned homes in there. Uh, and that's all we've done. We put in homes and sold them. The third park we bought last year in Ohio, we acquired 10 park owned homes with tenants and we worked hard. We're down to only three of those right now. We've sold them to those tenants or we've sold them outright. Um, it's just a lot less stress uh, mm -hmm. and, and better for the bottom line, but that's our model as well. But we so understand. You don't own the trailers, you own the land and yes, rent sir. those spots to the people who have their trailers there. Yes, sir. And, and anybody who's ever been a landlord knows better to not have to do maintenance and get those phone calls. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So this is a way to still collect rent, but without having any of the maintenance calls. Correct. Correct. Uh, and it's 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 almost a fixed cost in the parks. Uh, common area, you know, snow plowing, common area, grass cutting, common area, electric. It's fixed. Whether I have 10 homes or 40 homes, generally my fixed costs do not change. So it just the uh, the value add is tremendous there. But when I'm owning, if I own park owned homes, as you know, uh, uh, it, it cuts down on profit on that stuff. Right. So there you go. Because I will tell you, for a very long time, if I ever had a mobile home park lead, there was only one person I was only ever considering. That was always you. So, and anybody's listening to this, um, at the end, we're going to drop how to get a hold of Kyle. Maybe somebody knows of a park that's for sale and they want to send you the information, right? Um, maybe sure. it's something you look to buy. So you, I hear you have two in Indiana, one in Ohio. Yes, are you predominantly focusing in that area or are you looking for other areas or is that just your the sweet spot? Joe, that's just how it's happening right now. Um, we really dedicated this year to, to going in many different directions. Um, if we go outside of that area, it'll probably be in some sort of a joint venture, um, which we would be willing to do um, with, with our experience and background and run these things. But we would, depending on the situation, yes. Because I will tell you, we're in Florida, you know, all of you know that they are all over the place down here. Yeah. I have a seller I'm working on right now, and he says that I want a trailer, but I don't want it in a community. And even trying to find those in a decent price range, boy, it's, it's yeah. wild down here. Um, yeah, so we're trying to help them out. So finding mobile home parks for sales probably, is it similar or is it different than finding that single family? Fisbo, you know, for a sale by owner. Well, thank, well, Joe, you know, there are multiple, and Jen, multiple online sites for these homes, as well as, and actually, I think I learned this from, from you guys. Uh, I have, I'm in a lot of Facebook groups and I just type in Facebook, uh, mobile home investor clubs, so I'm in multiple uh, Facebook groups that people contact me all the time with stuff. And as we started, as we became players, so to speak, and, and people just contact you freely uh, behind the scenes, a lot of that's where all these off market things are coming on those sites. Uh, and we just kind of involved. Uh, so um, you'll see a lot of the stuff listed, anything over a hundred, it, it's going. The, the big players, the big brokers, when they list these things, they get the crazy money and they scoop them up. But the parks that, that need work are the ones that are sitting there ripe to be had. Uh, you want to do some good due diligence. So those are still uh, readily available to the public, but there's all kinds of wholesalers and mom and pops that contact us behind the scene for things. Um, so some we pass, pass along to other people, but we're just waiting. We've got a big project going on right now at one of the parks that we're kind of delaying future expansion for several months until that's done. But then we're, where we're going, but any kind of a joint venture, we, something we'd be uh, open to talking about that. Well, if some of you guys are listening. You know, the first thing Kyle does really well with is he branding, you know, Park Daddy. You know what's going on there for number one. And then the other thing that he did was super helpful is network marketing, right? Network marketing, meeting other people, not having to spend money on 
mailers or ads and maybe he does maybe he doesn't but it sounds like to me a lot of the back and forth that goes on in the instant messages and on on that way right so you branded yourself you let everybody know how you could help and bring value to them and they're going to come with leads right and that's how some of these you'll get your best deals that way that you know a recommendation or something like that from a friend or another investor and if they know that you're serious and you do a great job of branding yourself. I see you outside doing your videos and it's cold out and you're just, it's raw, right? It's what's happening. <laughs> sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's crazy. Sometimes if it's always entertaining. Yeah. We've got, I mean, we've got some good stuff coming too. Trust me. So we've got some good videos coming. Well, how are these people going to find these videos if they don't know where to find you already? Where's the best place? Well, um, if, if you just, I'll tell you this, you mentioned the branding of Park Daddy, and I'm going to give credit to, and you guys know him, Steve Zumagale, Real Estate Steve. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know Steve. Well, you know, he told me two years ago, <clears throat> when the whole Park Daddy thing started, he said, you've got something there. You need that name. So we are actually in the process of trademarking Park Daddy, Park Daddy all kinds of Park Daddy things, and we've got multiple we don't quite have our sites set up, but we have multiple. If you were to Google Park Daddy, uh, you, 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 we have website addresses there. Uh, and we're working on that with some of our fellow mentors. We're putting together some stuff. We're not quite there, but you, you can find me all over Facebook, uh, quite honestly. And I can't let you in our mastermind groups uh, just yet, but um, the, the Facebook mobile home groups is where you can find me. Or my, you can go to Facebook and look me up. Right. Just look me up. It, it's all good. Good. And so if somebody has a lead on a mobile home park yeah. and you want to get a hold of Kyle, go to Facebook. It's soon to come park daddy. I'm super excited. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So yeah, we're excited about that. We, we've, got, we've got a lot to do and I, uh, I wish I was a little more organized, but we've got a lot to do. Uh, well, it sounds we, like you're doing fantastic. So I want to bring something up that some folks might not have truly understood what you said, but how are you financing these deals? Sure. Uh, and all three parks were done differently. Uh, the first park, uh, when, when we say, and if you're in Ron's world and, and if you know who Jay, Jay Connor is, when we say private money, private lenders, these are people we know. These aren't institutions. So we actually, I had somebody who had approached me um, even prior to the first part, but knew what we were doing in, in the real estate investing business and said, I've got money. I did an early retirement. I got money sitting there doing nothing. Can you use it? So we took that money and bought our first part and, and just made some, some payment arrangements for, for future, you know, no interest or anything like that. Uh, well, actually I take that back. That was an 8%, but that was private money. That was just somebody we knew. Now, the second part, um, just something we also learned, it was because it had a, had a problem, a big problem, it was only $100,000. So I, I just bought that with cash. Uh, the third part, just like what, what you're learning from, from Joe and Jen, the seller, seller financing, uh, we, we bought that part with, with owner financing. We put put a little money down and then we've got, uh, I think five years and then a balloon payment. And, and prior to that, we'll go and refinance that non-recourse. Um, and we plan to buy other parks perhaps with non-recourse, meaning we are not liable for that debt, but our LLCs are. Uh, and we plan to partner up with other people with other more private money. In fact, the, the new mobile homes that we are bringing in, uh, we've got three different private lenders who are giving, they're buying those for us, basically. They're giving us the money. We're paying cash for those. Uh, and then when we sell them, when we sell the home, we, we pay them back with, with interest on that. And then there's some companies out there who will actually get those homes for you as well and give you up to a year to sell them. Uh, so... That's how, that's how we're, we're financing. You're not running to the bank. They're not pulling your credit. No. You're not having to go through and jump through all the hoops of conventional financing. You're either using private money, cash, or seller financing. Yes. So obviously Ron has taught you well. 
Um, and then when you refinance, for some of the folks who may not truly understand what non-recourse is, do you want sure. to just touch on that lightly? Non-recourse lending, and you can look it up, is um, if the deal in, in the commercial world, it's just it's just different than residential. But if you've got a, a million dollar park or more or commercial property, you can actually borrow money from a bank. And you do not have to personally sign for that. Uh, my Park Daddy LLC could be the borrower. So if something went south, the you know, like 2008, uh, if something went south, well, the LLC is responsible. I am not personally liable for that money that LLC gives. Which is huge because this is what Ron preaches to us. Yeah. And uh, everybody is non-recourse debt. And so some of the reasons why he would even, when he found out that I was burying deals way back when, after I was already part of his courses, yeah. you know, he wants to hit you upside the head, <laughs> but that's really yeah. the factor. And because he learned the hard way, right guys. Yeah. So yes. he learned the hard way for a lot of money, which he's open, very open about, but it's not just like, you know, a, one house, he was doing multiple commercial deals at once. 32 commercial deals he was yeah, uh, so he teaches that. And we and we did the same thing even prior to his problem with 20 some residentials that we personally guaranteed uh, rentals that we shouldn't have. We had no business doing that. We had no idea what we were doing and we tanked mm -hmm. it, but but we recovered and we moved on and, and we know better. But in the commercial world, guys, non-recourse is standard. That is not something special. That is a standard thing out there. Uh, they're going to look at the numbers of the project and what it could be and your track record. It's, it's a very common borrowing practice. Perfect. Yeah. So for all of you who don't know, this is why we love things like seller financing and wrap mortgages and lease purchases. They're just ways of being creative without having to personally have that debt in your name. Kyle is talking about doing it on a commercial level, right? By having a loan. And there's lenders out there that will do this, right? They're going to probably be, have to look at you in a little bit different way. Cause like what Kyle says, they're looking at the properties and they're looking at the income. If yeah. those two things make sense for them, then you've got a good track record and that's what they're looking for. They're not going to be really looking at your credit because if that deal goes backwards, it goes bad. They, they can't come after you personally. They can only come after the property, right? And the LLC that owns that property. So just a very smart way to do it. I want to make sure we touch on that because so many folks want to run to the bank and do it conventionally. And this is part of what we teach is not that. <clears throat> and it's really just regurgitating a lot of what Ron talks about all the time. Right. Um, so when you're finding these properties, you find your, your, your lender and things like that. Um, who's managing these? I heard you said you have a management company, but what's that like? Well, Joe and Jen, we are fortunate because, because we do have a management company. We, we are self-managing these. These parks, all three, are within an hour and 15 minutes from where we are. Well, I'm going to take that back a little bit. The two Indiana parks, we are 100% self-managing. Our maintenance guys go this and that. Our, everything is run through our office. You know, nobody, we don't take cash at the parks. Everything is run through the office electronically. In the Ohio part, it's just a little bit farther away. And quite honestly, I lost sleep. I almost backed out of the deal because of that. But Ann <laughs> Randall, Action Ann, my fellow mentor buddy from Indiana, talked to me and I, I realized no. So we bought that park and all I did over there, I actually created my own little team of, of uh, vendors over there. We still run all the admin stuff through our office in Fort Wayne, but we've set up some of our own repair guys out there. Some of our guys still go. Um, so we're geared for that as a company. I, I would feel very comfortable, say we were two hours away or so. Uh, we, we'd be very comfortable doing most of the management from Fort Wayne, but we would set up, uh, we would set up an on, uh, in, another team in the area to better respond to to the occupants there you know you sound very similar to jen and myself when we had our first deal and it was an hour from rochester yeah. we were so nervous at first like it's an hour away what are we <clears> going to do and then you realize 
like what you said, you found a team and system that works for you in, in Indiana. And so you want to implement that same type team in Ohio. And sometimes it's that very first deal that gives you that confidence that, you know, I can't just drive there in 20 minutes. Yeah. yeah and it's almost would... better that you can't because now it forces you to almost be a little better. That, that, that is true. Um, yeah. And I said, I almost backed out of it. And quite honestly, and we had a conversation. She said, you're park daddy, you fix problems. And then next day I was just on the phone, just lining up the whole team. But so we're prepared to do this. Uh, and, and we're prepared to do this throughout different parts of the country. We may have, and we'll have some people in the area, but, but we can do all the admin stuff right, right from here and all the rent collecting from here. Mm -hmm. And we were a part of a mastermind group with Action Man. So, yes. we know her. she rocks. So, she's, she's my buddy out of Northwest Indiana, as we're Northeast Indiana. But just don't mention her pig, Oliver. I always <laughs> mention Oliver in a barbecue sense, but that's a whole. <laughs> but Ann, Ann does rock. Ann rocks. She does her own simple business and it rocks. She's the kind where we were in a mastermind and she'd be like, oh, I, I end up because she's paramedic too. Yes. Yeah. And she'd be like, oh, I was, you know, talking to so and so today at this event. And yeah, they're they're selling me their house and I'm buying it a wrap. And I'm like, she just like bumps into them and it, they turn into deals for her. She's got some magic gift. She does. And that it works for her. So it doesn't yeah. matter, guys. You anybody can do something in in real estate. There's too many different options out there. And you're right. It's hard not to get that shiny object syndrome, right? And just yeah. jump from one yeah. thing to the next. And this looks great. And this looks great. Um, the one thing to... scaling okay. is about non-recourse. And that's, you know, staying in that one lane was always very important to me. Yeah. Sorry, I was going to bring up because um, when I asked you to kind of give us a little bit more about your bio and it's not just mobile homes. Like you have rental portfolio, you have some Airbnbs. Um, so are you continuing to add to all of those other avenues as well? Or are you strictly focusing on mobile home investing at this point? Well, no, no, Jen, we are pretty much doing everything. We will, we will, we've got, I think six Airbnbs right now. I, I hope to have 12 by the end of the year. We're currently working on more, you know, and I have my, my wife's heavy into that one. My son in law. So different people are doing different things. I'm not, the, the pretty house business is probably, quite honestly, the, the least amount of what we're doing right now, as I personally am focusing on the parks, the park daddy stuff. We, we may even sell off some rentals uh, to, to put towards parks. But, you know, we do the student housing as well. We've got a real estate company in-house. And um, so anything's on the table. As you guys know, when the economy turns, different things pop up. And so we're just, you know. And, and as you guys are seeing, you, what you're doing is going to get huge here in the next year or so, more so. So that's just the trend. Yeah. And I think it goes back to what gave me goosebumps in the very beginning when you started talking was that you're a constant, constantly learning and that you're a professional student. And it's these kind of mindsets that truly allow you to continue to grow and, and add to portfolios and change things. I think that Again, it's if you think you know everything, then you know the door is closed really quickly and it gets a little crazy. So I love that you shared that because we too are constant, constantly learning and, and who else can we learn from, right? Correct, yeah. Why we wanted to have you on here and really just shed some light onto that because it's amazing what you've got going on. Well, thank you. And, and you know, almost every student I deal with, we, when we get to the social media type stuff, and advertising, I'm always mentioning you. I've sent the picture of you holding your yellow sign to, to so many students, but you know, what you guys do and you, you make it look easy, you know? So uh, that's how I learn as well. That's how I learn. Well, you know, you find out what recipes work good from other chefs and you, you know, yeah. make them what works well for you. It's really smart. So I have to ask, like, what do you look for, like, for your risk reward when you're looking at a potential park? Okay. Keeping in mind, I failed miserably my first career in real estate. 
not too much scares me uh, <laughs> anymore, but I'm, I'm educated. Okay. I, and, and uh, if I just think a park is too far gone, what is the effort that we're going to put into this? Um, how much money is it going to take to turn it around? Things like that. Um, and when really the due diligence part of it, um, what kind of a sewer system does it have? How old is it? The, the drinking, how is it set up with utilities? How many of these homes are park owned homes? Um, that's really, um, at this point in time, not much scares us, but we, we, we uh, how, how much do we wanna have to put up with to get to where we wanna go? Quite honestly, where does this park sit? Does this make sense? Um, we're doing parks that quite honestly, people in our mastermind group won't touch um, because they want to do everything by the book and, and run their formulas, but, but we know what we're capable of. So that, that doesn't bother us. And that's kind of a weird answer, uh, but we certainly don't personally guarantee anything. So, so that's, uh, that's how that plays out. But we're not, we're not, we will wait to buy the right park. And we're not, we're not out there. Um, you know, we've not spent over half a million for any of these parks. Um, and these are all going to be 2 million plus parks when we're done. Uh, oh. And, and it's just the most, most of what we're doing is infill, uh, perhaps upgrading the lots and infill uh, with, with some capital improvement. You know, wow. unless we go out and get, you know, a bunch of investors who want to do something from scratch, we're not going to take that project on. But it's, so it's ones basic. that obviously are not overly tore up. So they're just that they don't make sense. But once again, you have a, a system, you have a team in place that helps you analyze these deals, aka the Grim Reaper. And for yeah. some of you that don't know why they call him that is because he kills your deals. He kills the deals. Um, but he's, he's looking for how the deal can expose you, right? Why is the deal not work and maybe shed some light on it that you don't see? Correct. Right. But it, it is all about the numbers, though. What is it now? Is there an opportunity to make it to make more? We're not going to buy something at re just like anything else. We're not buying it at retail. Uh, to hang on to it, uh, unless it was perhaps a 1031 exchange type situation. Uh, right. But but I feel I, I feel really good about what we know and what our 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 the, the Grim Reaper and Ron and Tish and you know we just uh, I feel good about our resources. Yep, that's fantastic. So what are your future plans with what you've got going in now? I know you've got Park Daddy trademark. You got yeah. that going on. You got any behind the scenes stuff juicy you want to share with us? Joe, because you know what I'm <laughs> going to tell you. I'm going to tell you, and this is the first time Park Daddy Academy <laughs> is in the works. Wow. We're working on that. So that's uh, exciting. That's that's exciting. And some of my fellow mentors are helping me with that and my wife. Uh, so we're, we're working on that. Uh, I'll tell you, there's a ton of us wholesalers out there yeah there's a lot of us out here who do you know creative finance and things like that i don't really know too many people who and i'm sure there are in the in the park world but something like what you can provide that value is tremendous right and there's a lot of people where i see parks becoming it's affordable housing yes yes um especially in Planet Ron, uh, there is a need for the education because it, there's a desire there. You, we can't deny there's a desire there. And I've immersed myself in other uh, mobile home, you know, mobile home university, other, other gurus out there in the mobile home industry. I have to learn that. So, you know, to create what we're going to do, we have to learn from everybody. Uh, and make it accessible for everybody. Nothing we do is rocket science, but 
you know, there's a lot of due diligence involved. And, and the, the, I guess the most important thing we could do is prevent somebody from making a huge financial mistake. And that's the education right there. So when you do have that, let me know, because I would love to know more about that and to, uh, we're professional students ourselves. So yep. we are in a, the land of <clears throat> mobile home parks down here galore and affordable housing is a true challenge in Florida. So I could see a huge need for what's going on now. Are, where are the deals? Who knows? But I'm sure there are some here like there are everywhere. Yes. Yes. It, you know, I'm sure you've all seen the TV show Cops. <laughs> so uh, my, one of my favorite sayings is if, if the mobile home park is a park we're going to see on Cops, it's probably one that we're going to stay away from for right now. So Okay. Just a nice. I thought you were going to say that was the one you were going to buy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have to keep that in not mind. Yeah, not yet, but there's money to be made in those. It's just how much you want to, you want to deal with. Right. Hey Kyle. Have you uh have you considered using any of these uh boxel homes, unfold homes? Have you seen those? Are you talking about those, those um mini homes? Yeah. Uh and this is Matt. Yeah, uh, Matt, it's something we would look at. What you're going to find is uh, not every park, not every, every park, every county, every state is going to have different rules and regulations. So it, it just has it just has to uh, depend on those areas. Yeah. So are there some states that are more friendly to them or less friendly to mobile homes or is it? Just well, a crapshoot. The mobile home industry is is wide open. Those those tiny homes that Matt's talking about, I can tell you mm -hmm. from right off. I know that Texas is a big supporter of those. I've seen those in in with um, with the regular parks and even the RV parks. Um, there's a there's a misconception out there. Uh, by the way, there's about fifty thousand mobile home parks out. there. 50,000. Uh, Sam Zell, who some of you may or may not know, and, and he's a billionaire. He's the number one guy out there. I believe a billionaire owns most of the mobile home parks. Uh, I think he's got 144,000 lots. Uh, and then uh, uh, where am I going with this? Uh, there's a general... A uh, misconception that places don't let you build mobile home parks anymore. And that is true in a lot of spots. They, they realize that housing developments will create more, uh, more tax revenue for them. Uh, but there's still a bunch of parks out there that are grandfathered in and they actually have space on them to develop. Uh, it, it's going to be very hard to develop a park from scratch, even if you had approval, the cost on that, the return on investment is, is just not there. Well, that helps shed some light because I would see that you would set up new mobile homes in your park. And I was wondering if you were starting the whole thing from scratch, but it sounds like you already answered that answer or the question with you already bought a park, you're bringing these homes in and then selling them but still yes. owning the park. Yes, <clears throat> we brought in parks with many vacant, we bought parks with many vacant lots, brought in new, new homes. Uh, one of the parks does have, it's already, it has another 18 uh, spots that were in the planning. We could add 18 from scratch in that park if we want to. And that would be a whole lot cheaper because our infrastructure is already there. Um, we could just tap into our, our utilities and, and we know what we do, but starting from scratch is, is, is gonna be a hard process. Are you typically uh, owning the land and just leasing it to the, uh, to the owners of the, the mobile homes or do they own them? Or are they renting them? What, what's your formula? Man, our, our, our process is uh, two of the parks are 100% tenant owned homes. We just rent the lots. The third park uh, that we just purchased, um, 
we, we purchased it. There were 10 park owned homes. We're down to only three. And our goal is to not have any park owned homes. It's strictly tenant owned where they're, they're renting the lot from us. Okay. So do you do any where you are uh, putting uh, mobile homes in your, in your park on a vacant lot and then selling it and owner financing selling it then or, or. That, that is our model, Matt. We have brought in almost 20 new homes and um, most of those have been sold with uh, traditional financing. Although you just, you can't go to your bank and get finance for a mobile home park, but there's two or three um, uh, companies out there that will finance a mobile home park for somebody. I will tell you, Matt, I think two of the homes, uh, and, and these would be the early homes that we brought in, we, we are doing, doing a form of lease optioning uh, only because you know, maybe we panicked because, hey, we're not selling this, but, but now we've had no problem. Uh, it's not as fast as we'd like, but we are able to sell these traditionally. It's never our, our goal. Uh, if we all of a sudden had a bunch of homes sitting and we just couldn't sell them, yes, we, we, we may do lease optioning types, but, but never a straight rental. Are you putting, when you're putting homes on your lots, are they new? New uh, mobile homes, or are they ones that are you're going to put in and renovate? Uh, for us, Matt, uh, they are brand new homes. We've attempted for two people to bring in their own home, and one of them fell apart on the way, and the other one was so old they couldn't even move it. So we decided we're not going to allow that. The one park that we did acquire, the 10 park-owned homes, uh, Six of those we sold off to the current occupants, gave them a great deal, basically gave them the home uh, and just kept that price as their lot rent. We did just renovate one of the homes and, and, and sell it on a land contract. My son-in-law did that. Uh, so that's not our model. Uh, we would if we had, if we acquire parks and we will, and they are able to be fixed up, we will either do that or uh, ourselves and then uh, sell them on a, on a term or outright. Uh, we, we, we don't want to get into that business, but we will because we are capable of it if we had to. Awesome. Keeping so, in mind, the older, the older homes, you know, nothing is standard on those. The windows are different sizes. The plumbing is different. Everything's different. You, you just can't go to the hardware store and get those pieces. It's, it's, uh, it's complicated. Uh, it's doable. Mm -hmm. I, there's just no money there, in my opinion. Sorry, so one of the No, I'm glad we got that. Um, great questions. So yeah. one of the questions we had is, what's the typical entry cost for one of these deals? Sure. When we bring in a new home, it costs, it costs about $10,000 to get it all set up. And by setup, I mean that the new home comes in, it's delivered by the factory. Then there are professional setup crews. We have to pay them to set it, to block it, to level it, hook up stuff. Uh, then they have to be skirted. Uh, then we supply steps. Then we, we supply a matching shed to make sure there's a shed from day one. We install central air conditioning. We want everybody to have central air conditioning. We install a dishwasher. We want everybody to have that. And if there were some parking, some, some miscellaneous improvements we had to do to make the pads ready for them. So it's generally about $10,000, maybe 12 uh, on our end to get that home ready to sell the way we want. It would cost you, if you wanted to move your home from our park, it's going to cost you probably $5,000 to get it moved and set back up in another part. So it's not really cost effective for you to do that. Uh, in fact, when we bring the new homes in, we sell the wheels and the axles to the, to the installers and they take them away and the tongue. And so it's not there just to make it that much more difficult. All right, you don't want it leaving once it's there. Right, and, and they'll, 
it, it wouldn't make sense anyways for someone to move their home. Uh, it, now, we, if there was a decent home to come into our park, we may pay someone the three to $5,000 to move it into our park. Uh, that, I think we, and we believe we would recoup that in a year and a half if it was a decent home. Uh, we, so that would make sense if it was the right home. Are these typically single wide or like double wide? Yeah, we, we personally are only doing single wides right now, 16 wides, occasionally a 14 wide, depending on, on the space. Now we, we've inherited some, some double wides, but right now it's not our intention to, to bring any of those in. And what's my typical cost of entry to buy a mobile home park? That depends. Uh, wow, I mean, that depends. Like I say, I, you know, I bought a park for a hundred thousand, but I'm, I'm, I'm putting in a half million dollar treatment plant right now. You know, I, I bought a park for 175,000, but we had to upgrade all the electric and, and uh, enlarge the pads, which is very common. The older homes were, were so much smaller. Uh, you know, a turnkey park is, you're probably not gonna get a turnkey park for under a million. But if, but if you do our model, it depends though, man. Well, you're gonna do some work. If you're willing to do some work, you should be able to get something nice for under half a million. Well, let me rephrase that by nice, something that you can turn around and increase that value big time. Interesting. And I guess once again, it depends on the price point you're looking at and what kind of work it needs to get it in there, right? So I know when I look at a cost of acquisition on a deal, yes. I'm looking at closing costs, I'm looking at how many months of rent, I'm looking at renovation costs. So I can imagine everyone's going to be different. It's not just the actual price or just the closing costs because behind the scenes, you're now having to do a lot of things to get the property stable and then bring it up to where you want it to be. So there's going to probably be some hefty costs behind that. Potentially hefty cost, but uh, some, some, some basic stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, the mistake we made and, you know, you make mistakes that, as you learn, was maybe we did too much. Uh, maybe we did too many improvements right off the bat that we could have waited a year or two, uh, and, you know, and, and keep that money, do something else with it. And so that's, that's, we're a little bit smarter moving forward that, hey, we don't have to do every single lot right now. Let's just do the amount of lots we're going to bring homes on, increase, increase that income, uh, and then, then just move forward from there. Uh, Very cool. I, 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 it's all, it's all numbers, but I think if, and it's, it's just reverse. I think if you're willing to sit on, you know, uh, I'm not going to get a return on my investment for three to five years, but when I do, wow, uh, it's a big one. So it's, that's the, it's a different game, right? You're not looking for that monthly cash flow as much as you're looking to spend some money, get it up to speed, and then obviously get potentially cashed out or have a lot of value there in a handful of years. Everything has to do with raising the net operating income. Uh, everything, every home that comes in, I just think, of, oh, wow, that income just went up almost $4,000. Um, so everything we do revolves around raising that because it raises the value of the park. Well, that makes good sense. I got one last question for you, Kyle, and I know you're busy, so we're going to be mindful of your time. Um, thank you for answering all these questions. Do you have a base cost? This comes from Trace. Um, do you have a base cost of the park on the rents, the land, or how do you evaluate if it's a deal or not? Yeah, absolutely. Um, in my mind, um, target rent, well, three years ago, target rent, if, if we got rent up to $300 a month, now we didn't buy any of them, uh, but that would be our target. That was three years ago, and now it's, it's $350. Uh, the lot rent isn't important to me because if it's low, we're, we're going to get it back. Um, 
I, I will tell you this, uh, as far as some basis, and, and they, the, the new mobile homes, the new mobile homes that are coming in um, are costing us approximately 40,000 to 50,000 right now, depending on which manufacturer. And, and, and I'll just use the term, that's COVID pricing. When we started three years ago, they were $30,000. Um, so those are the base prices though, 40 to 50,000 plus, plus our setup costs. Those are new homes? Those are new homes. Wow. And those are, those are decent new homes with two by six construction. And we're fortunate we have several manufacturers within an hour of us here. Um, we went to the Louisville Mobile Home Trade Show in, in uh, 2020 with Andrew Schlage. And that was the difference in us making the move to do this because when I saw the quality of homes and how nice they were compared to when I grew up in them, I was like, we're gonna do this because we're gonna, we're gonna do this right. And you can you can spend a whole lot more than that, uh, but that's what what we're spending to get these people in. So they're they're ending up most everybody that finances is ending up with a payment uh, between eight hundred and a and a thousand dollars a month between lot rent and and the home payment, and, and that's a factor uh, when we have a company like Twenty First Mortgage who are financing for these people. Uh, they're looking at what the lot rent is and what the home price is to see if it makes sense for these people to buy it. So it sounds like you have a whole system in place. We have a system in place and my goodness, our team is all, is all over. It, it's just that everything involved is such a huge world of the the suppliers, the, the financers, the setup people, you know, it's just, it's, it's awesome. Getting into the local communities, into these parks that, that were, were dying and then bringing them back to life has been very rewarding. Uh, very rewarding. Well, it's not always about the check. It's about really helping and building the community too. And once you can increase and, you know, make people's lives better, you know, that's, that's one of the greatest gifts there are. Yeah. And obviously if you can make some money along the way too, it's just a bonus is how I see that. But you know, it's, it's a lot of good and you're getting some of these places that are distressed and you're making them beautiful again and spending your time and effort. And yeah. you know, it's, it's a lot, but hindsight, you should be rewarded for doing that. You're not just doing one house like we do. You're doing a whole mobile home park. Yes. You're affecting a lot of people all at once. So it's bravo to you yeah. once again. This is why we're huge fans of what you've been doing. <laughs> That's why when we wanted to have you on here, it was a no-brainer uh, who we're going to get on first. Well, awesome. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank so you once for again, taking your time. We really, really appreciate it. Anytime, guys, anytime. So if somebody wants to find Kyle, look him up on Facebook. Park Daddy is around the corner. We're coming soon. So definitely stay tuned to that. I know I'm going to be probably trying to be customer number one oh, yes. on that. But if any of you guys are also looking at that, or if you're watching this down the down the road, um, definitely reach out. Not only is he super, super informative, but really great guy too. You've always been super nice. So that's part of it. You want to work with people who you enjoy to work with. And Kyle's always been a pleasure. So um, thank you for having us today. Once again, Jen, did you want to let us out with something great? Oh gosh, um, you know, I just think that the sky is the limit and you definitely have our brains turning a little bit, you know, you don't have to do just one thing, but you have to start with something. And I, I love that you shared your journey here with us today. And after Park Daddy gets rolling, maybe in another six months, we'll have you back on and we can hear more about that, uh, that course you got working. Hey, we might even have some sunglasses, who knows? <laughs> All right, love it. Well, uh, back up in Indiana, will be warm by that time. So <laughs> there you go. Sounds nice. good, guys. Sounds good. Thank you guys for being here. And again, you if you have any questions, hit Kyle up on Facebook and uh, we'll connect you guys. So have a great day, everyone. And we'll talk to you next week. We'll see you next Tuesday. See you guys. Bye, guys.